Before I start, I think I should clarify that this video is a little redundant, as it can't really apply to the current wipe right now, and though the information I'm going to provide you with might not be useful right now, it can be useful in a future wipe, and I really think I should just pass on this esoteric knowledge that I've been holding on to. So with that being said, roll the intro. Today's topic, gunsmith parts. Anyone who's done a gunsmith task in Escape from Tarkov knows the pain when faced with the realization that you have to source your parts from the flea market. Based off my past two guides on scalping, it's been discerned that the Tarkov flea market is a place of filth where money-hungry scumbags thrive. On the flea market, it's too common to pay tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of rubles for something that a trader can sell to you for a couple thousand rubles. So whenever you're on the flea market overpaying for gunsmith parts, it's easy to blame the low-life scum who run the flea market. But the one you should really be shifting your blame to is supply and demand. You see, Tarkov has this funny system where most items in the game can be found in raid. Everything from guns, to weapon mods, to ammunition, to medicine, to food, it can all be found in raid. But alternatively, and preferably, you can buy certain items from traders and your loyalty level with that trader determines what you're able to buy from them. These two factors directly play into flea market trends. An easy way to think about it is that the majority of the player base will be on a certain gunsmith task. Let's say they're on gunsmith part 8, and a specific part that they'll need is a Zenit RK3 pistol grip. So now we've established that there's a demand for Zenit RK3 pistol grips. Now we have to determine how much supply there is. If we look to traders, we can see that the Zenit RK3 pistol grip is available to buy from Skier loyalty level 3 after a quest is completed. Based off this little bit of information alone, you would think that there's a large supply of this pistol grip, but because Tarkov is special, we have to account for the demanding player's average level. We can determine the player base's average level based on one simple factor, that being the gunsmith task they're on. So if we know that they're demanding Zenit RK3 pistol grips for gunsmith part 8, we can assume that they are level 17 on average, which is the level required to unlock gunsmith part 8 with mechanic. Knowing this information, it's now known that the vast majority of players on gunsmith part 8 will most likely not have skier loyalty level 3, or have completed the quest either. So going back to the supply factor, we now have to find out where we can source Zenit RK3 pistol grips, with the only option left being found in raid. It's a fact in Tarkov that the supply available on the flea market is always less than the supply available from traders. So because there's high demand for the Zenit RK3 pistol grip and there's a low supply, it's going to be priced much higher on flea market than what it's worth to buy from traders. So taking all of this information and combining it with my past experience with gunsmith parts, I can effectively make a comprehensive list of certain gunsmith parts that are expensive on flea market. Before I get into this list, I just want to explain some key things that will make this list easy to follow. The first being timing. Timing is the most extreme factor when it comes to looking at this list. All of the parts I'm going to be talking about aren't going to be expensive all the time, so we have to determine when the majority of the player base is on a gunsmith task. The rule I like to follow is that starting from the first day of wipe, I space out every gunsmith task by three days. My assumption is that on average, the majority of players will be on the next gunsmith task every three days. So to keep things simple, I'm going to directly reference the weapon parts with the gunsmith task they're required for. And when I list a part, I will also provide the trader it will be available to buy from at the earliest point. So to start off the list, I have gunsmith part 2. For this, mechanic requests that you build an AKS-74U. And a key part needed for this build is the 6L31 60 round magazine, also known as the ice cream cone. This weapon part is soonest available as a barter with proper loyalty level 2 after completing the task, ice cream cones. Going on to Gunsmith Part 3, Mechanic requests that you build an MP5SD. And key parts needed for this build are the X-Products X5 50 round drum magazine, which is soonest available as a barter with Mechanic Loyalty Level 2, and the BNT Tri-Rail Ring Mount, which is soonest available to buy from Peacekeeper Loyalty Level 2. Skipping on the Gunsmith Part 5, Mechanic requests that you build a Remington M870. A key part needed for this build is going to be the GKO2 12 gauge muzzle brake. This weapon part is soonest available to buy from Jaeger Loyalty Level 2. A separate factor causing this part to be expensive is the setup task with Skier. The majority of the player base will be on the task setup with Skier, which requires the use of 12 gauge shotguns, making this a popular part that often sells out. Going on to Gunsmith Part 6, Mechanic requests that you build him an AKM. A key part needed for this build is the Fortis Shift Tactical Foregrip, which is soonest available to buy from Peacekeeper Loyalty Level 4. Skipping to Gunsmith Part 8, Mechanic requests that you build an AKS-74N. Key parts needed for this build are the Zenit RK-3 Pistol Grip, 
which is soonest available to buy from Scare Loyalty Level 3, the Zenit PT3 Classica Stock, the Zenit B33 Dust Cover, also soonest available to buy from Scare Loyalty 3, and the Zenit B30 Handguard, soonest available as a barter with Mechanic Loyalty Level 2. Going on to Gunsmith Part 9, Mechanic requests the build of P226. Key parts required for this build are the Stainless Elite Pistol Slide, soonest available to buy from Mechanic Loyalty 2. A factor that drives the price up on flea market for this part is that Mechanic has a limited stock of these, and he often runs out of stock while the player base is on this task. Skipping to Gunsmith Part 11, Mechanic requests that you build a Chris Vector 9x19. Key parts required for this task are the Vector Mark V Modular Rail, soonest available to buy from Mechanic Loyalty Level 3, the Tactical Dynamic Skeletonized Foregrip, soonest available to buy from Peacekeeper Loyalty Level 2, the Glock Big Stick 33 Round Magazine, soonest available to buy from Mechanic Loyalty Level 3, the Vector Non-Folding Stock Adapter, soonest available to buy from Scare Loyalty Level 3, and the Chris Vector 9x19 itself, soonest available to buy from Scare Loyalty Level 3 after completing a quest. Going on to Gunsmith Part 12, Mechanic requests that you build a SIG MPX. Key parts required for this task are the AR-15 Tactical Dynamic Skeletonized Pistol Grip, soonest available as a barter with Skier Loyalty Level 3, and the Yankee Hill Annihilator Multi-Caliber Flash Hider, soonest available as a barter with Mechanic Loyalty Level 2. Skipping to Gunsmith Part 14, Mechanic requests that you build an HK-416. Key parts required for this task are the EOTech EXPS-3 Holographic Sight, specifically the TAN one, soonest available to buy from Mechanic Loyalty Level 4, the LA-5B PEC Tactical Device, also soonest available to buy from Mechanic Loyalty 4, the Surefire SOCOM 556RC2 Suppressor, only found in Raid, and the HK416A5 11-inch Barrel, soonest available to buy from Mechanic Loyalty Level 3. Going on to Gunsmith Part 15, Mechanic requests that you build an AS Val. Key parts required for this task are the SR3M 30-round magazine, soonest available as a barter with proper Level 3, the NPEC-15 Tactical Device, soonest available to buy from Peacekeeper Loyalty Level 3, and one of three Suppressor Mount options, being the Zenit B3 Ring Mount, soonest available to buy from Scare Loyalty Level 3, the Zenit B3 Mount Combo, soonest available to buy from Mechanic Loyalty Level 3, and the Taz 6P29M Mount, soonest available to buy from Mega Loyalty Level 3. Going on to Gunsmith Part 16, Mechanic requests that you build a DVL-10. There aren't any required parts for this task that can't easily be obtained from traders, but the DVL-10 itself can be difficult to obtain. It is soonest available to buy from Scare Loyalty Level 3, after completing a task. Going on to Gunsmith Part 17, Mechanic requests that you build an AK-102. Required parts for this task are the Circle 10 30 round magazine, soonest available to buy from Peacekeeper Loyalty Level 3, the AK CNC Warrior Muzzle Device Adapter, soonest available to buy from Mechanic Loyalty Level 3, the AR-15 Fur Friend CQB Muzzle Brake, soonest available to buy from Peacekeeper Loyalty Level 3, and the Fur Friend CRD Concussion Reduction Device, soonest available to buy from Peacekeeper Loyalty Level 4. Going on to Gunsmith Part 18, Mechanic requests that you build an AKMN. A required part for this task is the Magpul Jukov S stock, soonest available to buy from Peacekeeper Loyalty Level 4. And that concludes the list. The majority of players that get this far in the task line have already unlocked max level traders, so there's no further opportunities to make a profit off of a low supply. One reason I like this list is that it helps players understand what parts they should be picking up as opposed to leaving in raid. Often, the majority of players will find a gun part in raid and not know whether they need it for a gunsmith task or not, and this list helps you understand what parts you should be picking up so you don't get scalped on the flea market. Now that I've shared my list, I'd also like to share my two favorite locations to look for these parts. The first is on Customs. In the corner of the map next to Z Bunker 11, there's a building I like to refer to as Green Screen Room. If you enter the front of this building and make a right, there's a set of shelves near the back wall, as well as a locker and a couch. Various weapon parts can spawn in all of these spots. Another spot in this building is if you make a left through the front entrance and go up the staircase. If you head down the hall and go through the door to the left, there are various weapon parts located on the tables, shelves, and in the weapon boxes on the floor. The next map I like is Reserve, specifically the third story of the White Knight building. If you make your way to the White Knight building, head up the stairs, and go to the furthest room at the end of the hall, various weapon parts can be found on the tables and in the weapon boxes. Then if you make your way out to the roof, various weapon parts can be found in these spots.
I hope you learned something in this video, and if you enjoy watching my content, it'd be appreciated if you subscribe to my channel. If there's a specific video you'd like to see from me, just let me know in the comments. And thank you for watching.